On the island of Trinidad is a lake made of asphalt that is the largest asphalt lake in the world. The next time you're in an airplane, sitting on the tarmac getting refueled, think of the pitch lake of Trinidad. Because without that lake and its contents, the scene that I described would look very different. On today's episode of Life's Public Buffet, we're going to talk about the reasons for tarmacs and for the very fuel that goes in that plane. I'm John Paulus. You're listening to Life's Public Buffet, only on YouTube. If you are enjoying Life's Potluck Buffet, please subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. And thank you to everyone for listening. This story starts with a hummingbird. The hummingbird is very important to the island of Trinidad. In fact, in the language of Trinidad, the original language of Trinidad, the Locono language, which is often referred to as an um, Arawak or Arawakan language, the name for the island is hummingbird. Apparently the word is iere. If you speak the Locono language, uh, then please uh, let me know in the comments uh, if that, if, how you pronounce that and what the word is exactly. Now, the story goes that uh, two different villages were uh, fighting and one of them thought they had won this battle and celebrated it with a victory feast. But in the victory feast, they cooked hummingbirds as part of the food and they ate it. And for this, the winged god of the area punished them by having a lake open up in the ground and the tar, the asphalt, consumed the entire village in the same way that the village had consumed the hummingbirds. And that was the end of the village and its people. And what's left is the pitch lake. Now, as I said in the story, what's in this pitch lake is asphalt. Um, asphalt is a petroleum product, and it's um, very, very viscous. And it is uh, called in um, English, we call it, we use the Latin word for it. We use the word... Um, Either you might pronounce it bitumen or bitumen or even bitumen. And that, depending on where you are. Although I've, you know, even though they say that in the US bitumen is more common and in the UK bitumen is more common, I've heard people in the United States call it bitumen. Uh, so who are not connected to the United Kingdom. So if you pronounce it bitumen or bitumen, or if you've never said the word before, then let me know in the comments. Now, what is bitumen and asphalt? And you know, what are we talking about here? As I said, it's a petroleum product. And the words for it go back to oh, a long time ago. Now, the word in uh, Greek asphalt is one of those pre-Greek words from the Eastern Mediterranean, from in this case, from the islands of the Eastern Mediterranean, that was widespread and well-known long before the people who spoke the language that would we would call Greek came to the areas that are now in modern Greece and modern Turkey. You're going to see um, etymologies of the word that claim that it comes from roots of words in those the in the in what would become the future kind of European languages, that is a false etymology. I will just tell you that it really has to have come from pre-Greek. Now, why? Well, 
it has to do with the, the, the way the word is so common across all those islands, and also the fact that in ancient times and today, on the island of Zakynthos, um, off the western coast of what is now the modern country of Greece, there is a very well-known tar pit that produces asphalt. So there was already a word for asphalt in that area for the, for the substance that was coming out of that tar pit when the people who speak the language that we now call Greek arrived. So that's asphalt. In Latin, the same kind of substance got called uh, bitumen, and that is um, why there, we, we call it both things sometimes, and that's why there's some confusion and, and so forth. So what does the island of the hummingbirds and its tar pit have to do with the modern scene I described where you're sitting on the tarmac in a plane, it's getting refueled with jet fuel. Odds are that tarmac is made of asphalt concrete, which is a mixture of the petroleum product that is called asphalt that we were just talking about, that tarry substance that in English we often call tar, and an aggregate. And the aggregate is, I think of gravel and sand and pieces of various types of minerals. Just think of rocky, chunky stuff. And that's the, that's the, that's the aggregate. And this is normally called asphalt concrete. So very important in use in all sorts of roadways and all sorts of surfaces. And that is... Uh, without so without the without asphalt without the bitumen that doesn't exist which means that that tarmac that you're sitting on doesn't exist without asphalt like the kind of stuff that comes from the pitch lake in trinidad i'm not saying the asphalt came from that pitch lake in trinidad that is making up the tarmac, but I'm saying without the substance, that bitumen, there is no, there is no tarmac. There is no runway. There is no, there are no ro- modern roadways, the paving. And the paving is in a, plays an important role here too because the reason we call it a tarmac is that it is short for a, 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 um, a, com- a actual composite material, uh, not too m- dissimilar from asphalt concrete that was something called tar mcadam first of all let me just say that mcadam is the name of a person name of a person from scotland who came up with an idea for a way to pave roads and what mcadam did was created a kind of formula for uh, basically crushed up, and these were hand crushed with hammers by people on the side of the road when they were making these roads. Um, so crushed up rocks that were done in large si- larger, slightly larger sizes, and then on top of that, smaller sizes. And the idea was that the smaller ones, as the, the steel rimmed uh, and wood uh, wheels from carriages would roll over them, they would um, press down on the crushed rock and create a level surface because the edges of the smaller pieces of the crushed rock were significantly smaller than the than the uh, width of the wheel and on the carriage, and so it would like press them down and then they would form a smooth surface. Now the issue with this with this surface was that when you have things like car wheels you know on it the a lot of dust got kicked up and so another kind of clever person who uh, is a pioneer in roadway surfaces uh, whose last name is Hooley who's a Welshman um, Hooley came up with this idea to um, spray tar to spray asphalt or bitumen, on the 
surface so that it would stick together and the dust wouldn't come up. And so what, what that person created was what he called tar McAdam, and then that got shortened to tarmac. And that's why we call tarmacs. It's a combination of McAdam, which is the name for a roadway that's made out of crushed Step, crushed rocks uh, to the specific situ- uh, specification and the coating of tar on that roadway, thus creating a dustless surface or less dusty surface. Okay, so that's the tarmac you're sitting on. Now, I was also saying that the jet thing wouldn't exist either if it weren't for the pitch lake of Trinidad. And this is actually directly connected to the asphalt in the pitch lake. So this is not just asphalt in general. This is specifically the pitch lake asphalt. And without that pitch lake asphalt, you would never have jet fuel. Not the jet fuel that is getting put into the plane right now, but the very idea of jet fuel would not exist if it were not for the pitch lake in Trinidad. Why? Because of a person born in Nova Scotia in Canada. And that person's name was Abraham Pineo Gessner. And Gessner was in the business of transporting horses from the um, Americas to the European continent. And yeah, he didn't really do, do that well. And so he ended up just um, going to medical school. He became a doctor and a scientist. And he was playing around with what we call hydrocarbons, like petroleum. And he was using the bitumen from the pitch lake in Trinidad, which he was familiar with from when he was doing his uh, Atlantic horse trade. And what he was able to derive from the uh, the um, bitumen of the pitch lake was a substance that burned very easily and was uh, liquid. And what he had discovered, he called wax oil, but he used a Greeky sounding name for it and called it kerosene. And kerosene is the main thing that jet fuels are made of today. Jet fuels are kerosene. And kerosene at that time caused a revolution in the lamp industry and the lighting industry because when he started to use um, asphalt uh, that was derived from a, a from New Brunswick in Canada, uh, from a, di- a different source, not not a um, liquid source, but rather a solid source, and called Albertite, which is basically solid asphalt. It's just a, a harder rock-like version of the um, viscous and liquid uh, tar the asphalt that comes out of tar pits. And so without the experiments on the asphalt from the pitch lake in Trinidad, we would not have jet fuel. Well, let's ask the cards how to propel our lives forward and see what they have to say. So yellow lemons, blue dumplings, magenta noodles, cards, tell us some things. It's card 51. Being a different you teaches you a lot about the regular you. Okay, so imagine that you have one new identity that is completely different from one of the many identities you have right now. So you might choose an identity that you wish you knew something about. Perhaps it's something you've always imagined yourself doing, but you've never done. Explain what that means to you and what you need to do in your usual life to honor that identity that came to mind. So what identity came to mind and what do you think you need to do in your life about it? 
Thanks for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow on Life's Public Buffet. (laughs) 